What's going on guys? Welcome back. Crazy for KV's RC. Been gone for a little while. Obviously last week I posted a new podcast episode. That's not really super hands-on content. So we're back to making a video. Um, just kind of waiting on something that really piqued my interest. Something I had time to do. This project I think will be pretty quick turnaround and something I'm looking forward to. So what you're looking at if you hear any strange sounds, there's a uh, pretty good thunderstorm going on right now. So, but here in front of me, obviously, pretty recognizable. This is the early Bronco from Axial. This is an SCX 10.3. I actually sold my SCX 10.3 Jeep. Uh, I bought and sold a few things. If you are interested, kind of hearing about what I've been up to, why I've been MIA, um, things I've been working on just slowly, go give the uh, podcast a listen. I'll link that up here. But, um, yeah, I ended up with this as part of a lot. Bought a few other things. I don't, I don't want to spoil it, um, but this is the only vehicle that remains out of the lot. Um, I had it listed for a little bit um, for what I thought was a fair price. No one bought on it, but it is basically brand new. Um, I don't think it's ever been ran on any dirt. It's got like no dirt on it. The axles are brand new. A um, little bit of tire rub on the fenders but I think it was just driven around in someone's living room uh, with some different wheels and tires on it. So, um, and you guys also may notice that the truck and me are all in frame. Got a new lens. So hopefully you guys like this a little more. Um, if I need to get in there, we'll have a secondary camera or we'll do some B-roll. But uh, from now on, this is probably, you know, the main way I will shoot videos. But this truck, I already uh, unhooked the lights. This. Uh, early Bronco comes with uh, front and rear lights on it. Um, it's an RTR, so it comes with RTR electronics. It's got the standard um, Spectrum radio. It's got a two-in-one receiver um, ESC combo. It's got a, I think it's a 35 turn. That's a, so a three slot brush motor. If I know anything about this, um, I haven't even powered it on to be honest, and I probably should have done that before I tried to sell it. It's also got the stock uh, Spectrum servo in there. All bone stock, both battery trays, it's got the dig servo. But I really need to know too much without knowing for a fact that it is not gonna perform very well. And that's not a knock on Axial. I've actually wanted one of these since they came out. Didn't want one bad enough to pay the 550 or whatever they were um, originally. They did recently run a sale on them where they were $299, I think. Kind of hard to pass up, but at the time I was, you know, contemplating selling my SEX 10.3 JL, the Jeep, and didn't really want to have another 10.3 in the stable until I got rid of that. Well, I got this in a lot. Like I said, it basically, I paid nothing for it. Everything else was worth what I paid. Um, so this was kind of just a bonus. So um, I thought, let's try to do something cool with it make myself like it so that I actually can drive that beautiful body around. I really contemplated on doing a before and after or a, a before running video um, just to kind of show my thoughts and impressions, but the weather's been pretty crummy. It's insanely hot. It likes to rain every day, um, basically in North Florida weather right now. So we're, uh, we're just gonna skip that step. There's no need to get it out, me to be disappointed. Um, the thing I've driven the most is my C2 comp truck and it performs really well, super predictable, very planted. Um, this is pretty much the opposite. One of the downfalls, if you're unfamiliar, um, one reason people kind of beat these SCX 10 threes up is this transmission. It's, it's very complicated. It's got dig and a two speed built in, which is cool. Um, one downfall of the two speed, there's not really enough difference between the first and second gear and it basically is pointless. So leave it in first gear. It's pretty easy just to leave it locked in first gear. The dig is okay. Um, using one of these micro servos, it's a Spectrum micro servo, so, you know, pretty underpowered. It's not the best dig mechanism. It sometimes doesn't like to re-engage, like just right here on the bench. You gotta kinda roll it, there you go, all the way in, but, that's kind of the reason like the transmission is just overly complicated. It's very heavy. Um, it doesn't sit very low and it does have a very forward motor mount, 
Um, the motor is under here, underneath the scale, uh, five liter Ford engine. Um, just it's just a cover, but the motor sits very high. The motor is right here. Um, you know, it sits well above. It's just barely below the tops of the fenders. And the motor is probably one of the heaviest parts on the vehicle as far as electronics. Um, it basically sits directly in line with the servo. So you put a big, powerful servo. Those whip, you know, have a little bit of weight to them. And uh, put a nice brushless system or like a big, powerful 550 can or something like that. And you're just putting a ton of weight up top. So that's just kind of 10.3 in general. Now the base camp um, has a di different transmission in it. Um, it's laid out a little bit differently. It's kind of simplified things. And I think it's a much better setup. I don't have one, but just watching videos, looking at it, um, taking a good look at pictures. It definitely seems much more performance oriented, but um, this, you get the really cool body. With the Jeep, you get a really good body. The Gladiator looks great as well. That one's got a real long wheelbase on it. But this is my favorite, I think, of all of them, and it has been since it came out. If they would have sold this in a kit, I would have had it. Um, I just don't like paying RTR prices if I'm gonna put my own radio in it anyway, and, um, you know, eventually change out all the electronics, because let's be real, this is crazy for KVs, it's not crazy for slow turn brush motors. So this thing's gonna get brushless. Um, don't know exactly what yet. Um, we'll kind of figure that out as it goes along. But my goal is to make this thing into a performer. Um, it's not gonna be a comp truck. Uh, it's not gonna be my best performer, I know that. But with this chassis, everything in it, wheels, tires, and the body, the body weighs over a pound and a half by itself. Um, and the truck with the body is seven and a half pounds without a battery. So if you put a good, you know, trail size battery in there, your 4,000, you know, 3,500 up to maybe 5,000 milliamp hour 3S, you're looking at eight pounds, which is just too much. Um, the inner fenders are really nice. It's a nice feature, but added weight, um, big molded bumpers, added weight. The interior, the cage, everything, it's got a spare tire. It all looks great. The problem is it's all added weight. The nice thing is that this is on straight axles, so you don't have that increased height um, and center of gravity of a portal vehicle. But I really just don't see how um, this chassis is gonna work for me. So let's clear off the bench and I'll talk you through what my initial plan is. All right, so if you guys have been watching the channel at all, um, you know that I'm a big fan of Vanquish. So I've built um, mini Vanquish kits, Pro, Ultra, I think four Phoenixes, maybe five. I got a few in the works that are built on the Phoenix platform and uh, my C3 is built on a Phoenix. My A1 is built on a Phoenix. I have a Phoenix. So very familiar with it. I like that setup a lot. One of the best things about it is A, it's a very, very rigid chassis. By the time you get the cross members in there, it is super stiff. Another great benefit to the Phoenix is the transmission. Yes, the VFD Twin is a big, heavy transmission. The nice thing is it sits pretty low. Um, we're gonna take, you could potentially take some of the molded pieces off of that just to reduce some weight. And the motor sits very forward, just like it does on that but I would guess that it sits at least an inch lower, possibly more. Basically the whole width of the can of the motor, it sits that much lower. Um, the link's barely clear, and I happen to have a whole bunch from those kits. I don't throw anything away, hardly get rid of anything. Um, so I got a bunch of those parts. So I have a few sets of these Phoenix VS410 chassis rails. Um, I have drive shafts, I got shocks for days, I got all sizes, um, but I think I'll probably run 90 millimeter shocks. I also have some element shocks, so we might work those in there instead. Um, this is a brand new bag sealed for a VFD twin. These are some of the main classic components, shock towers, um, skid plate sliders, and chassis braces, things like that. We're talking a 12-3 wheelbase of the the uh, early Bronco to a 12-3 wheelbase of the Phoenix. Now, 
One of the problems is my favorite part about that body is the lack of exposed body clips. It still has body clips underneath it, which is fine. So I need to figure out how, if I need to design something, if I can just do some cutting, make some things work to make that body system work on this chassis. Um, the profile of the chassis rails is a little bit different. So it might take, it's definitely gonna take some cutting, but it might take some 3D printed, 3D design brackets, maybe some totally different mounts, just to be able to, be able to utilize those factory body posts that are mounted to the body and they point downward. Um, there's also fine designs. He does a clipless body system. So if I can get the bumpers from the axial chassis onto this Vanquish chassis, as long as they're in the right spot or very close with some minor trimming, I might be able to just buy those. He's on Etsy. I'll link that down below. Have not used them, but people say great things about them. Makes it a true body clipless system. Uses some uh, 3D printed. They're not FDM printed. They're like a nylon type print to actually create a clipless body system. So one thing I forgot to mention is um, that SEX 10 3, like I said, it has straight axles. The pumpkin in the front is actually an offset. Um, so it actually works out where I can run that VFD with no issues. If you're trying to do this with like an AR44, you're gonna have some problems with your drive shaft angles, getting things to clear. I don't think it's gonna be too much of an issue. We're gonna find out. Um, and obviously, if you guys are seeing this, most likely I had some sort of success in getting this thing, at least the ball rolling. Um, and I'm confident that I can, you know, piece it together and make it work. So that's the plan for the chassis. Let me get my electronics boxes. I'll show you guys a little bit of how much of a hoarder I am. It's not too bad, but um, we'll go through it and we'll kind of think about what we want to do with that truck. We're at the bottom of the box, and I think this is probably what we're gonna use. Um, I just gotta make sure this will clear a VFD. And that's a Hobby Wing uh, Fusion SE. I bought this a while back, and I actually have not used it yet. Um, still got the seal on it. They were really hard to find. I was at an event. This was the last one uh, Cody from Dixieland RC had. I'll link him down below for a free shout out. Look him up and see if he's got something you want. But anyways, so the only thing I have to realize, I have to figure out, and I'm not gonna ask the question, I'm gonna search through the Facebook groups and see if this one will fit in the VFD uh, twin specifically. I think that it will. I think it's probably just gonna take a little bit of clearancing on the upper link. Um, but I've done that before, it's not too bad. A couple millimeters, you just shave it off of the plastic and you're good to go. So that solves our power system, most likely. I might change my mind. I might actually go with brushed. I made the joke about being brushless and crazy for KVs, not crazy for you know slow uh, brush motors, but um, if I could find the right combo or I think that this eight turn 550 will do the trick, um, we might go that route instead. <laughs> So I'm thinking for a servo, I'm gonna put this Traxxas 2056 in there. Um, it's got like, you know, 40 or 50 ounce inches. I'm just kidding. Um, we're not gonna use that. Really, I have uh, one choice. And it's an EcoPower um, WP120T. Um, these are really good. Uh, you can run 7.4 volts. It'll give you 400 ounce inches. They're rebuildable. I have two of them in here that aren't spoken for currently. And yeah, it's, uh, they've been great for me. I know some people don't like them. They're not the quietest. Um, they're not the fastest or the strongest, but for I think 70 bucks, it's kind of hard to beat. Let me get this stuff cleaned up and then we'll touch on a few more things and I'll let you guys go. Okay, so we're back. We got the 10-3 back here in front of me. I've kind of looked it over a little bit, looked at the actual 
you know, the bumper mount, things like that. I'm not afraid to drill holes in the chassis, put new holes in the bumper mounts. If I can do that and I can make it line up, that's the plan. I'm trying to get this thing chassis swapped and electronic swapped with no, um, you know, cost to me right now. All those things I have, I already had them. Um, I didn't buy anything specific for this. Um, the last thing I haven't talked about is wheels and tires. I wish these wheels were metal. Um, I wish they were aluminum, but they are a beadlock. These are not a glued wheel. They have the knockoffs that cover up the wheel nut, which is actually really cool. I think they look very appropriate. So I think we're gonna keep the wheels. I think I'm gonna run plastic wheels, I know. Um, but I like them, I like the style. The only problem I have is the tires. And these tires feel okay. I would say they feel like some of Axial's best tires, but I know they're not gonna give me the performance that I want. So um, we're probably gonna look to switch those out. Most of what I'm doing is not gonna fix the high center of gravity that comes with this body. This body is seriously heavy. Um, especially, I would like to run a spare tire. I may even order a third set of whatever tires I decide to go with to swap the spare as well. I may even order a third set of whatever tires I decide to go with to swap the spare as well, just to you know finish out the look. I know I just said I wasn't gonna buy anything, but that is the one thing I'm kind of thinking about and a few other things that I'll talk about here right now. So I'm not a fan of putting just brass on stuff. I've done it before. Obviously I uh, built the TRX4, the 2021 Bronco into a pulling truck and it's sitting at about 13, 14 pounds. I took some weight out of it. Um, but for a truck that I'm actually gonna crawl with, trail with, uh, it's just not the answer. Now putting a big powerful brushless motor or a big 550 turn uh, brush motor or something. Sure, I could get away with this if it was 10, 11 pounds. I put all brass on the bottom um, to get the center of gravity kind of sucked down a little bit. But that's just not really uh, what I want to do and I don't really want to spend the money. I don't have any brass for these axles. So everything I you know do as far as weight, I'm gonna have to pay for it. So I am thinking I'm probably gonna do some brass diff covers. These have the red um, diff covers. I know some people like it. I'm not really a huge fan of that look. So we're probably gonna find some brass diff covers. Um, I may do some brass knuckles, um, at least up front. We're gonna lose some of this plastic, the running boards, you know, the kind of part of the sliders. I'll probably have to cut them um, to make them worth, work with the Vanquish chassis. And if I don't have to, I probably will. Um, my biggest thing with the inner fenders is I just don't want to be able to see into the truck. So um, we'll see what we need to do, but that's the game plan. I want to make this into something I like to drive. I really didn't enjoy driving my Jeep. Um, it didn't really perform that well. I tried it on 475s. I tried it on 419s, uh, portals, straight axles. It never really did it for me. And this body is even heavier, so it's gonna probably perform even worse. But we got quite a bit of work to do. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the chassis assembled um, and start pulling off the bumper mounts and stuff like that and see if I can get that body to bolt up. And once we get that done, we're pretty much off to the races with making this thing work. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys. Before you go, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment. Let me know if you have a uh, early Bronco, what you've done to it to kind of take it to the next level, get a little more performance out of it. Um, definitely a very scale, cool body, but I want it to be fun to drive too, so I can actually get it out and enjoy it. But stay tuned guys, I got stuff coming. It's slower right now than usual, but uh, still doing RC, still loving the hobby, and I hope you guys are too, thanks.